Good morning, high performance computing fans, and welcome to Denver, Colorado. We're here at Supercomputing 2023. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by my fellow analysts and one of my favorite co-hosts of all time, Lisa Martin. Good morning, sweetheart, how are you doing? Good morning, great. Uh, this is my first SC. I'm so excited to be here. I feel lucky to get to have the first time with you. I know. What do you think so far? What's your first impression? It's massive. It's massive. So much bigger than you would expect, yes, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, we'll have now to do a wander you were here last year. Is it bigger than last year? I'm it's, hearing it is. It certainly feels bigger than last year. Last year was very much buzzing, but you can tell with the rise in AI, one of the key themes of the show, there's a lot of activity. John, I want to bring you into the yeah. show. You mentioned you saw a llama walking in. Yeah. Tell us about that. Well, obviously the AI. A real llama. The AI is the gift that's <laughs> just giving more and more energy and hype to this market, of technical people by the way, which are skeptical hype, but the hype is matched by people working on stuff. The llama was walking around the streets outside in downtown Denver. Just cruising. Just people were strong with the Grok sign. It was Grok was the company promoting it. Llama and AI are synonymous. Uh, but that's the theme of the show so far is the impact of AI to high performance computing and the intersection of the semiconductor players and the cloud is happening and everything in between is going to be uh, up for grabs, up for innovation. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be a good market for kind of rethinking, taking the exaflop mindset and chips and interconnects and networking and bringing that up to this performance of, of this next gen cloud and edge. So, I mean, it's going to be a perfect storm of innovation. So this is going to be a changing fast ecosystem. Couldn't agree with you more. David, you and I had the pleasure of co-hosting in Dallas last year. What do you think is the biggest difference between the vibe there and what you've felt already since you've been here? I think that although AI was already front and center in we people's minds last year, we definitely were talking about it. We definitely were talking about AI, but not as much as I think we'll be talking AI this year, for sure. Now, one thing I want to say, I'm not 100% sure that the llama thing wasn't just a coincidence based on walking around downtown Denver last night. <laughs> <laughs> there may there very are cowboys well, here, maybe they're wrangling I llamas. Have seen cowboy heads. There yeah. could yeah. be a breeding population of llamas downtown. Yeah. That, that's a possibility. Could be an endangered species. Yeah. We have Brock on the show, don't we? Maybe we, we get do. the llama on the we'll, show. We'll, Ooh. we'll find Denver's out. booming, yeah. I mean, the whole tech scene's here. But, but yeah. yeah, 100%. It's, uh, it, it's more going to be, okay, what is this intersection between high performance computing and AI? Um, and uh, you know, I saw some presentations yesterday where um, it was co going back to sort of old school supercomputing, looking at fluid dynamics. Okay, great. Right. What about AI? So I, I think I think that we're going to be pulling the AI story out of guests we get to interview, okay. and mm -hmm. they're going to be sharing with us their their well, the, intersections. The explosion from a year ago with with ChatGPT and Gen AI has been yeah. huge. We've seen such. Everyone's Absolutely. talking about it, yeah. everyone's really transfixed on it. So I'm looking forward to, to your point, yeah. to teasing that out of the conversations that we're having with lots of different companies, including a lot of hot startups. And you know, I got to give a shout out to Dell Technologies who makes this possible. And they had the vision last year to see this coming. And I attended their community session with Dave uh, yesterday, their community, HPC Community Day, and they had everyone there. We had uh, um, all the top players. You had Boeing talking about how they're going from 800,000 hours to stand up the kind of analysis with cores um, and with fast, faster cloud action and how Dell is taking advantage of that. This is an opportunity for the Dells of the world to get in, back into the game because a lot of on-premise thing is going to happen. You're going to see that. And that's already kind of conversations in the hallways so far, Dave, about you know, the net new, not repatriation from the cloud, net new workloads running on premise, on hardware, <laughs> bare metal, <laughs> that's going to be fab have fabric over the top. So kind of, Dave, and now a shift with the architecture, so I think it's going to be an on premise uh, wave, uh, cloud operations wave, and it's going to be a performance wave. So that's new, and I think Dell saw that last year, so props to them for helping us sponsor this event. And I'm excited we're going to have many guests from Dell on the show today and throughout the course of the week. John, you mentioned something that I want to highlight there. You mentioned customer use cases. And I'm really hoping that we hear a lot more customer stories yeah. from some of our guests so yeah. that we can actually bridge the application portion of the yeah. AI conversation. Absolutely. It's one thing to talk about large language models and machine learning. It's an entirely different thing to implement it at scale in a way that yeah. matters to people outside of our nerd bubble. Yeah. And I really hope that we get to see that. 
That's Gaven. my plan for a lot of the a lot of the conversations. It's really to understand that yeah. real yeah. world application, Where are we regardless it? of industry. Yeah, Dave and I were talking at lunch yesterday again at that Dell community kickoff, what, and about end to end, the kind of end to end workload architecture conversation, not just the point model or AI specifically. And I think you're going to see the conversation shift to okay, there's going to be some new things we're going to do in the workflows, uh, or the as as we Broadcom and Zach was on night. yesterday yeah. says when the job's complete, which is in their world when something happens, which is a part of the processing, you're going to see faster concepts. And with iteration, that's the theme of AI, you iterate and you got to do testing. So I saw in the Dell and other vendors, they have these new environments where you can go in and test and baseline your AI and then repeat it and see if that, set that up. That's new. That's the new dynamic you're going to see where AI is going to bring a discipline around how do you instrument it, what's the iteration playbook, which is going to kind of go old school back to the old POC days, you go in and you test stuff for a few days, and I think Dell had a program where you can come in for, in two weeks, stand up, exaflop kind of performance for those HPC workloads. So again, we're back to the old school kind of concepts in the modern way, so I think that's going to change the ecosystem. Yeah, I, and I, as you know, I spend a couple of mornings a week in uh, my Wharton classes with the CTO program, digital transformation program, so, I'm in these virtual rooms with dozens of CIOs and CTOs and they're relaying their real-time stories yeah. around this very subject. And I'm definitely going to be probing on some of these questions. Not so, you know, as you mentioned, it's not so much a story of, about repatriation, but I'm definitely hearing the lament from CIOs in very yeah. large organizations that they no longer have the sort of data center muscle necessary mm -hmm. to build things that they know they could have built on their own just a few years ago. Now, for fear of missing out, they feel compelled to run in the direction of cloud service providers, essentially. Mm -hmm. And so it'll be interesting yeah. to hear the perspectives of folks who are providing hardware and software infrastructure into both of those worlds, yeah. both the on-prem and the cloud world. Uh, so I'm going to be channeling the questions that I've been given by my students uh, this week. I'm really looking forward to it. Interesting that you're hearing them actually succumb to external pressures at the sea oh, yeah. level. Well, they, they're lamenting it at least, <laughs> but they are, but yes, but yeah. they're, they're saying, you know, we really believe that we could create differentiated value if we still had these people in our data center who could do these things differently, but we don't, because we got rid of those people, yeah. or we moved those people into new roles. Yeah. Well, who did that? Well, I did. <laughs> All righty then, <laughs> so now what are you going to do? Well, we're going to use service providers, um, and so, you know, this, this whole interesting dynamic, especially with Dell in the mix, the question of when do you need something like uh, you know, NVIDIA GPUs versus TPUs versus CPUs? Um, what are the different requirements of training versus inference in an AI environment? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're, really, we're going to get our, uh, our knuckle-dragging hardware people knuckles <laughs> scraped up yeah. uh, You must be this excited, you're, you're a self-proclaimed hardware nerd. I am a hardware nerd. I heard John you were out last out. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> anyone who knows me knows that I'm, that I'm a hardware nerd, and, and even when we talk about cloud or we talk about software, there's hardware behind every piece of that. So I think it's really exciting to walk a show floor yeah. and see enormous racks and cooling systems, very different type of show floor here. Yeah. David, I love that you brought up students, that you're going to bring some of your students' questions to the floor here. There's a lot of universities represented and a oh lot yeah. of projects. This is really an intersection, not only of enterprise and startups, which we talk about often on yeah. theCUBE, but also academics yeah. and academia. I think it's, it's going to take a lot of unique minds of great diversity to write the algorithms for our collective future. And I love that we're here. I can't wait to hear what yeah. some of those conversations are going to be. I got to bring it up because no one's mentioned it yet and it was a hot topic last year, quantum. Do you think that we are going to be talking about quantum as much as we were last year, quantum <laughs> hybrid? That was a yeah. big chunk of our conversation. Or is AI going to overpower that? Yeah. Obviously those two things are interconnected, but I'm well, curious. Well, I mean, my opinion is clear. AI is going to overpower quantum on the hype side, for sure. We're uh, already Quantum's seeing had it. its hype cycle a day. However, um, I, I was kind of skeptical on quantum coming into here in terms of you know, still seeing that visibility into those use cases. Uh, and I thought AI, you see faster time to value. You mentioned yeah. some of your students yesterday. There's people, there's some pragmatic quick AI hits you can get right now out, out of the gate that are quick wins to kind of go to the next level. But quantum, you're starting to see that. Yesterday, Boeing pointed out specifically in the presentation that there are visibility into use cases coming quickly in traditional computing architectures where quantum will add value. Molecule, molecule work, and also wing design, 
Mm -hmm. So in wing design, they have they layer the fiber yeah, yeah. and the, the, the composite, whatever, that's, whatever the material is, and they can simulate that at scale. That is amazing. So now you're starting to see the beginning of the areas where you can apply the quantum. And we've been waiting for that. So yeah. I think that's going to start the domino effect of more quantum conversations where real scientists, as they get more horsepower, more exaflops, fix the networking, get the interconnects in there, I think you're going to see another architecture level move up in traditional HPC to embrace that quantum piece. So, I, yeah, yeah, so please. Savannah, so just to be clear, um, I will be talking about quantum computing <laughs> and, I will not be, and I will not be talking about quantum computing. And those two things will happen simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> In different places. <laughs> Un unclear, but if your mind and isn't blown yet. Yeah. Yeah. And what will be the result of those two complex calculations happening simultaneously? Both. <laughs> Both. Fantastic. Well, I look forward to that hybrid Both. model, that quantum yeah. hybrid experience. The that user we're all experience get to is enjoy. amazing on that yeah, algorithm. <laughs> hey, you know, you got to bring the classical with I'm, the future in certain cases. Well, chip implants are coming next. Uh, you know, that's what I'm waiting for. Is, you know, <laughs> the AI chips, full AGI implanted. <laughs> I, I mean, there are, I have, I have met some of them at, at conferences, this is a detour, but who cares? There are definitely people who are biohacking and there are quite a few people yeah. oh, in yeah. the cyborg yeah. community. Oh yeah. yeah, There's also, yeah, there's some wild stuff. I bet there's actually people on this show floor that very much identify. Maybe we'll find out who our closet culture. biohackers are on the show. Maybe that's like a low key challenge this for is each one, one of us. I like us. that, I yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. This is a nerd I'm, culture. I'm I mean, they, first of all, they're going to love your Rubik's Cubes. And by the way, one solved. So <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. 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 We saw that yesterday. Also for the OCD oh, okay. Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, does, oh. It, does it stress okay. you out when they move? One was solved. <laughs> one was solved, one was unsolved. Don't yesterday they were both There's unsolved. There's so many smart people here. Yeah. Someone will fix my earrings. All right, so if, you, if you're watching here and you're at the show, come by and check out the solving the problem. We'll have a little off-site little session. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, this is your chance to get a segment on theCUBE. Yeah. The faster you go, unfortunately, the shorter time you get. <laughs> However, we will yeah. we will allow you to come solve my earrings. The, I have made a pact to myself to learn how to do it by KubeCon Paris. Savannah, the thing, the thing I want to get your thoughts on is, as this nerd, nerd culture here, Dave, you too, you've seen the, the audience here. They're technical and yeah. they're snarky, but they're also like skeptical of hype. So it's interesting yes. to see how they react to the AI hype because there's very an element of, this is totally, look at llamas on the streets. I mean, this is, you're bringing a lot of hype into a scientific, anti-hype, anti-marketing kind of vibe. What do you guys see, that the reaction there? Because I'm seeing not Love a lot of blowback, but definitely skeptical posture. Yeah. You brought up something that I think is really interesting. At KubeCon last week, it's largely a community of developers. We always say in that community, you can't sell to them. You can't get salesy with developers. They're not going to drink the Kool-Aid. I think in this community, in the high performance computing community, they really separate and distill the hype from the myths and the reality of what the true application is. And I think that that's interesting. I think that people are here to have a good time. I saw people in light up cowboy hats. I hope to find yeah. one this year like I had last year. But I do think that <laughs> conventional marketing stunts aren't going to go as far as you might yeah. think. It's not, it's not going to be as a, a, intriguing. I have to say, and you can't quite see them here on the set, but just, just next to us over here, there are actually published papers and research algorithms and a lot of information exchange up on booths that you would not see outside of an academic environment yeah. anywhere. So what I can say about this community, to your point, I think they can see the hype through the forest of chaos right now and the noise, the, the whatever the analogy might be there. And uh, But I do think also everyone is here to learn and everyone is here to think about how they can collaborate to be the companies that emerge in this next do wave of Do you think they're rejecting AI. the hype or accepting it? No way. They're, no, I'm not buying the rejecting the hype. I don't the think hype. they're rejecting okay. it. I think uh, I'm not that, saying, I'm, I'm asking I mean, a question. No, no, it's a great question. I, when, you know, when we talked about it a little bit last night, I think there's a bit of a celebration of the return to attention to hardware and the sexiness of hardware. I mean, granted, I'm biased yeah. as a hardware nerd, but I do think that when applied applicably and without you know, fear mongering or some chaos around what our quantum AI future could be, it's not all Skynet, I think that there actually is a celebration for everyone here to where more people in their mainstream life may actually know why they, what they do and why that is important. Yeah. So I'm excited. What do you think, David? I think, I think Lisa and I are going to be the BS detectors on this one if anyone comes in and says. <laughs> oh, I love this. Anyone okay. comes in and says, oh, AI is hype. Come on, we, we, we just saw an example of uh, Love it. Uh, Cambridge University in the UK yeah. casually mentioning that their cluster, their data center that they use for work that they do, 
uh, has 100 million pounds worth of, I don't know if it's pounds or euro, I think it's 60 pounds, 100 million pounds worth of hardware, none of it is more than four years old. If you're running an operation like that, That's a wild and you don't understand that you can stuff. get another 200 million pounds, if you simply say, it's for AI, ah, <laughs> then yeah. you're foolish. So, so there is a very, very practical, cynical reason to embrace AI yeah. if you're in the HPC SC yeah. community. Um, and I, I think that, that the savvy people will be doing that. Yeah. Yeah, and I want to see where it is in the hype cycle versus becoming a business imperative, a business reality across industries. Yeah, yeah. No. well the guy from Tech yesterday said, said in the Dell session, AI vindicates the HPC way, AI hardware is going to dominate, AI needs these new interconnects, and so AI is feeding into the system. So I, I really agree with you that there's, there's maybe a hype in the general consumer market with ChatGPT, but the nerds are embracing it as a, yeah. as a lift. Yeah, I think uh, it's more time. of an awareness and it's going to democratize. I mean, we were talking to yeah. Johnny Dallas last night and he was saying that he's seeing engineering teams of three have the same level of efficacy as engineering teams of 500. Wow. That changes the whole ball game for folks in this space. So I, I think we're seeing a lot of movement. I think it's really exciting. We, I, I, and I can't wait to highlight you too as our AI BS experts <laughs> for the rest of the week. I think that's going to be awesome. <laughs> David, I just want to hit on one last point that you mentioned there. I happen to be one of the judges for the Consumer Electronics Show. And I'm judging the UN Human Security for All category, so I got to see 100, almost 150 projects that will be announced at the show already a few weeks ago. And I could not believe how many of them misappropriated the use of the term AI. Really? And, oh yeah, oh, sure. everyone just threw that on their yep. deck or uh, in their video or Copy whatever. Paste. And for those of us who have been around hardware nerds, OGs in the tech space, we can we can see when someone's bluffing on that front. So I, I, I'm looking forward to what I am confident is an incredibly sophisticated and deep discourse around all of high performance computing and what it actually. Jo John means. and I plan to enjoy a delicious steak with the famous AI steak sauce. <laughs> but you and do you plan to bring this many a good dad jokes to the rest of the week? I, for the, yeah, as, sure hope yeah, so. I'll be Can't here. I'll be here. I'll be here until Thursday. Um, <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. On that note, John Furrier, David yeah. Nicholson, thank you so much for being here. Lisa Martin, I cannot wait to hear your thoughts over the course of your first supercomputing. I know. I'm. It's going to be fantastic. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Yeah, I can feel your energy. I'm very excited. And thank all of you for tuning in to our live coverage here from the Mile High City. My name is Savannah Peterson, and you're watching the Cube, the leading source for emerging tech news.